All right, Jewel. So after that absolute downer from Mark Ogden, <laughs> how, about, how about we lift things up uh, with some quick hits? Let's go. Now, we've all heard how crime has supposedly gone down during the lockdown because people are home and not out on the streets. But that only makes what happened to Della Ali all the more frightening. And you know what? I got to say, I wanted to lift us up again, but this is sad and, and scary. Yeah, well, you're right. He's okay. Yeah, he's okay, and he's, so is uh, the people who he's uh, self-isolating with, which is his, his stepbrother and and his agent, his partner, Dele Ali's partner, obviously, and another friend of his, who were all in his house uh, in on on Wednesday night, in the night between Tuesday and Wednesday, when uh, when two uh, people broke in and threatened them, uh, punched Dele Ali as well in the face, robbed. A few things, stole watches and jewelry and things like that, which was a really scary experience. Ten minutes from where I live, uh, as well in, in what usually is quite a quiet uh, area, completely quiet with a lot of football players from Spurs and Arsenal live. So scary incident. And as you said, we're just glad that everybody in the Dele Alley uh, household is safe and, and not too shaken up, hopefully, by, by what happened on, on Wednesday night. Oh, no, I, I, I got to say, uh, what struck me was how bold these people were because... You know that he's home. There's five people in the house. These two guys are broke in because it's England. As far as we know, they don't have guns. They have knives. Yeah. I mean, five adults in a house, I, you know, it, it takes, takes a lot of guts to go and break in that way. And it shows you how desperate, how bold these people are. Um, you know, you would have think you're safe when you've got that many grown-ups in a house. Yeah, definitely. On Monday, Gab, you had to go at Giorgio Chiellini for what he said about Felipe Melo and Mario Balotelli in his uh, new book, his biography, coming out soon. But he sort of did 180, right? Yeah, and this was actually pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, they, oh, they, they... shut up. Come on. You're too no. kind with him. No, no. The way they got to him was pretty sweet. They're, 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 there's, a, there's a TV show that plays practical jokes and, and, and does reporting in, in Italy called... The, uh, called Le Yen, it's based on the characters from Reservoir Dogs. And um, basically what they did is they went with a camera crew to Mario Balotelli's house. And, um, and they said, hey, Mario, look, uh, Giorgio Chiellini said these awful things about you, said you should have been slapped around. He says you're a negative person. And you know, Mario's like, look, I've done so many stupid things. I don't think I'm necessarily a negative person. Um, and they asked him to sign a shirt for, uh, for Chiellini, which said, you know, you knife me in the back, but I still love you, you bald weirdo, something like that. Um, then, so they take the shirt, hop in the car, they drive to Chiellini's house in, in Turin, about an hour away. They wait outside the house. He comes back, I, mean, I watched this last night, he comes back, he's like carrying groceries and stuff with his, with his mask on and his bald head. And, uh, and they said, hey, you know, you were really mean to Mario, did you mean it? You know, they have the cameras there and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I thought about it a lot. Um, Maybe I was a little bit over the top and stuff. Because, you know, Mario sends you this shirt that, you know, he still loves you, even though you're so so horrible and you backstabbed him. And I think Kalini got kind of embarrassed and uh, and they did a video call with uh, uh, with Mario and and the two kind of made, made, kind of made up. Um, whatever you think of it, I think, you know, Kalini made the point. He's like, when you make mistakes, you learn lessons. Um, I hope he has learned his lesson. Like I said, if you're going to be a bomb thrower, be a bomb thrower. If you want to have an institutional role, be a captain and a leader, you can't go and do this stuff in, in public. And So, so the book all... is not coming out? No, no, the book is still oh, coming so out. So it's been amended? It's not going to be amended. Oh, right. Oh, okay. So you learned the lesson, but not really. And, you know, for people who don't know the whole story and we buy the book, we sit with Chiellini hammering Mario Balotelli and Felipe Melo and probably others that we don't know yet, right? No, I think it's only those two. I, oh. I think Chiellini knows... I'm like, this is what bugs me. Look, this is what bugged me at the start. He was punching down. He says, let me pick two guys who everybody criticizes, who, you know, <laughs> Felipe Melo is known as sort of some wild man joke. Uh, Balotelli is, you know, captain irresponsibility in the eyes of the world. So let me go and just go and talk about how awful these people were in the dressing room. Um, and then that, that's what bugged me. It was wussy, you know. You want to, you know, you, you want to go, you know, pick on the heavyweights. Pick on people your own yeah. side. Yeah. But I, again, I hope he's recognized that. And at least they're not, they're not, really they're not fighting anymore. Ooh, the Catalan press keep churning out the stories, Jules. So we've had them signing everybody from, from Neymar to Lautaro Martinez. Yeah. And doing that clever thing where they have these pretend swaps where they send overpaid players nobody wants the other way. Um, each as well, yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, but now, what's this about a Laporta back candidate running on a platform of bringing back Pep Guardiola? Well, good luck with that one. Your Laporta, as, as we know, was the, um, the president of Barcelona between 2003 and 2010. So, some pretty good years there, if you think about the Champions League in 06, the Champions League in 09, for example, and all of that. So, but there was also a few issues, well, more than a few issues during his time at the club. And now that we know there will be election uh, in a year time, it seems like he's fencing coming back. And I mean, well, he can't run again, so he's going to choose can. his own candidate. Right? Yeah, he's yeah, a strong so man. Yeah, but you know that whoever we choose, Laporta will be behind. Uh, you know, pulling the strings. He's going to have his. He's going to have his hand up his back aside. He's going to yeah. ventriloquist dummy. Yeah. Exactly, and I guess to try to make it credible, if you're a Laporta and you say like, "Yeah, I'm going to run again with with my people," then you throw the name of Pep Guardiola in it and say, "And I will bring back Pep Guardiola as well if I'm elected," which we all know there's that's a very, very, very long shot. I guess he's trying. Although the time, elections, right? I think, are looking at 2021. Yeah, if there so is a scenario yeah. where City get banned for Europe, uh, maybe City, you know, win the Premier League next season. Could Pep just ride off into the Surely sunset? No. no. Do you think he'd go back? Do you think he would go back? I don't. And I think he probably doesn't appreciate that, you know, his name is being thrown around. But I think equally, <laughs> yeah, probably. equally, though, I think Pep wouldn't mind if Bartomeu left. And if there were, because I think he does care about Barcelona. And if there was another candidate uh, in the mix. I mean, that's just my, my hunch. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. Uh, Ivan Perisic, which, who I wonder if he's in your P team, if he made the P team or not, the Marco Tipi team or not, has played his part for Bayern Munich this season. He was on loan, remember? But it's not clear if he's going to stick around next year and we can blame the pandemic, right, for that? We can blame the pandemic for tons of things. Yeah, the, so the curious thing is that, um, so he's on loan from Inter. Uh, there's a buyback clause, I think it's around 20 million. So for, for Bayern to make his move permanent. The problem is that option expires on May 15th, which as we take this is actually tomorrow. Now, Bayern haven't communicated that they want to exercise that option. It's a little bit like the Cardi situation, like, you know, Antonio Conte is sitting there crossing everything, saying, <laughs> oh my God, please take him, please, please take him. Please, please, please. I need to have two because they need that, they need that 20 million. Um, if you're Bayern, you're going to be smart here, right? You say, yeah, you know what? Maybe instead of 20 million, maybe we'll give you 10 million. Because what are Inter going to do? Like, you know, uh, it's not like they're going to take him back and sell him to somebody else. I mean, or rather, it's going to be very difficult to go and do that. So um, it's got everybody on tenter hooks. I don't know. Would, would you keep him around? I, I, I wouldn't know. And especially if I'm, if I'm signing Leroy Sane or if I'm optimistic of signing Leroy Sane, having already Gnabry and Coman. Uh, and and even Alfonso Davis, who could play a bit higher in the pitch, or you, you've got other options. I would send him back. I would say continue back, and I would um, I would invest the money in, in different areas. Now, as Real Madrid unveil plans for the refurbished Bernabeu with its retractable pitch, Gary Neville has said Old Trafford feels dated and could use a facelift. Is he right, Jules, or does he just hate Manchester United? <laughs> well, he certainly doesn't hate Manchester United, but I think he's right. I've been. This season, I think he's the most I've been in one season at Old Trafford. I think I've been five or six times before, before we went on to the break. Uh, and every time I find the stadium amazing and, and it's gigantic. It's, I find it beautiful in a way and also so old. And I'm thinking like, why? So you, you've extended it. You've made it the biggest stadium, the club stadium in, in the country right now. But yet it's still falling apart in some places. You know, if you look at the, the way even the dressing you're going into the dressing room and all of that is so old that of course it should it, it, it could get a, a facelift it should get a facelift surely you must United have enough money to refurbish it and make it without having to make big changes to it you don't need a roof you don't need this you don't need that but I think there's a lot of part in that stadium that could be better and maybe you could even earn more money if you improve you know all the hospitality stuff all the boxes you could add boxes maybe it's surely something that they should think about Maybe they can think about it, but I mean, given that there's games behind closed doors for the considerable future and there's a global recession, the idea that they'll spend money on this so we can make more money off of corporate hospitality, I don't know. seems a bit far-fetched, especially from what we know of the Glazers. I did, Old Trafford yeah, doesn't bother thing. That's it's the not, thing. You have time to plan and to make the refurbishments so for when fans come back, it's at least in a better state than it is now. 
I, I don't know. I, I think he's over the top. I think I think there's bigger issues. And also, I don't think every stadium needs to be some new cookie cutter architectural onanism that, that, oh, that, that, that we see out there. You know, like it doesn't. Fine. But surely, when was the last time they, they touched it? What, for for Euro '96? No, it was, it was when when they when they expanded it and they added the third tier. Yeah, but that, they didn't refurbish it. the rest of the stadium. So I think they did. I think they did. did. They? I don't know. Yeah. It looks like he hasn't been touched for a long time. And because you can never have too much Manchester United in the quick hits, Gab. And Hel Gomez is out of contract at United and has reportedly turned down 30k a week. Should United up their offer? And I saw that Chelsea were quite keen on getting uh, Gomez on a free. Obviously, do you think that would be a good move from Chelsea as well? Uh, no. I think if you're United, you look at this and you say, I'm sorry, you may be a promising player and international, uh, but this is the offer. This is what you have shown me that you are worth thus far. You would try to lock him in. I think a lot of these stories are coming out, by the way, because he has uh, he's a new advisor, Pin Zahavi. Um, I'm not, you know, like these guys have, have asset values, right? In the sense that if you can lock him up, you know, in a few years, you can sell him and he's homegrown and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think that should come into consideration for, for United because, like I said, they, they have money. Unless you think that this guy is going to be able to contribute to your team and not be some dude you leave on the bench for three years and then sell him to, to, to Newcastle for $10 million. Don't mess around with this. It sets a bad precedent. £30,000 a week for what this person has contributed so far. And also what his future is. I mean, I, I'm not saying if you're short, you can't play football. You know, Messi has shown that. But given the position this guy plays, given his skills, well, what's I don't... What's wrong with short players? What's, what's no, no, no. What's there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. But they have to have something else. They have to either be extremely technically gifted or be super quick or be super smart. This guy's not any of those things. He hasn't shown himself in, in some of the worst United teams in recent memories. The guy can't get on the pitch, right? Yeah. So, you know... And as for Chelsea, I'm sorry, you got you got Hudson the door, you've got Polisic, you've got Zayek. Do you need this dude too? I don't no, think so. I so, don't think so well done to United for, for 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 keeping your counsel and stay strong. Don't give him any more money, and uh, let's see somebody else plays. And besides, if he does move, they'll still get. It's not like they lose him for nothing because he's under 21. They'll still get some level of compensation. So you still yeah. get some money for him. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.